Hi, I'm Peggy Lieben Blake. I'm a professor at the University of Houston. My research interest is right hemisphere cognitive and communication disorders, and I teach classes in neuroscience and anatomy and physiology and cognitive disorders. And hi, I'm Jerry Hepner. I'm from the University of Wisconsin-Eau Claire, and I teach courses in neuroscience and acquired cognitive disorders and counseling and a little bit on dysphagia as well. Um, and my research interests are in teaching and learning, but also in the area of acquired cognitive disorders, particularly rehabilitation for individuals with traumatic brain injuries. Jerry and I are pleased to present our new book, Clinical Neuroscience for Communication Disorders, Neuroanatomy and Neurophysiology, being published by Plural Pub Publishing. We both love teaching, and this is one of the topics that we each have taught for many years. Writing this book was our opportunity to expand our teaching beyond our own classrooms. So one of the things that we've both noticed in our years of teaching is that some of the neuroscience books are overly detailed and the really complex con concepts are not effectively um, connected to everyday clinical practice. On the other hand, there are other books that are really too vague and overly simplified for what people in speech language pathology and audiology really need. So our goal was to write a book that makes the complex material really understandable and approachable to upper level undergraduate and graduate students, and also provides really direct clinical application to the practice of speech language pathology and audiology. In this book, we were very intentional about providing broad clinical applications. This includes equally emphasizing the left and the right hemisphere contributions to communication, discussion of both developmental and acquired, acquired neurologic disorders, and consideration of pediatric and adult clients. We don't have a book to show you quite yet, but it's coming very, very soon. Peggy can show you what it looks like. Nice. Okay. So it'll be a little thicker than that when you see the actual text. Um, Peggy and I just want to share a little bit about the content and the approach of the book um, and emphasize some things that we think it brings that other textbooks might not. One thing I want to mention is the illustrations in the book. We worked with a phenomenal illustrator and she drew all of the illustrations specifically for this book. I want to reiterate that one of our broad intents of the book was to make a direct connection between this neuroscience content, the neuroanatomy and neurophysiology in everyday clinical applications. So we developed a number of cases based on real individuals um, to help make those connections and to help break down the silos between different types of disorders. Um, so you don't see someone with only aphasia or with only memory problems. So the cases really integrate things like swallowing function and speech function and language and cognitive function together in one case and hopefully tie um, the connections between those in the brain together really well. In fact, we have 21 cases in all. Um, that includes 16 adult cases, um, most of them being acquired um, cases and six, excuse me, five pediatric cases, most of them being developmental. Another thing that we were really intentional about was discussing communication broadly, not just focused on language and acquired disorders of language, but also cognition and pragmatic aspects of communication that you see more often. And we, throughout the book, we've infused a more balanced discussion about how the how communication is controlled in the brain that both the right and left hemispheres play equally important roles in communication. So to that end, some of the images also, we don't only show the left side of the brain in the images. So students get used to seeing both sides of the brains from the lateral view. With the supplementary materials that we provided, there are videos that show how to do an oral MEC examination. And Jerry worked with one of his students to be able to make these videos to provide this, again, direct clinical connection between the cranial nerves and the anatomy in the book and the clinical function, how you would assess it and important things to look for in the process. 
Yeah, so we hope you'll take advantage of that supplementary um, information and videos um, to augment um, student learning in the class. Now, as everyone knows, things don't happen in a vacuum, and we want to express our um, deep gratitude both for the people who taught us and helped us get to this point in our career where we could uh, take on such a task as writing a book like this. Um, but also to the reviewers who read through the early manuscripts of the book and gave us really great feedback and encouragement in um, completing this project. Absolutely. Um, and we hope you'll consider um, using our textbook for your class or as a reference for your everyday work. Thank you so much. Thank you.